Hello, hello. It's Dean and Dave, and I'm here with my good friend Daniel Velatas. Daniel, how are you doing? I am very good. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, we are here streaming live to you, um, and we got some exciting things to, to share. Uh, so many in the DNN community have been anxiously awaiting this day, and it's pretty epic, right, Daniel? I mean, it's like nine dot eight dot zero is out, and Let's just hear it for the ability to now completely remove Telric manually, of course, in this version. Um, but Daniel, what, how, like, I know this is a big release and we could sit here and talk hours just about the release itself. But I mean, as it relates to the topic of tonight, um, what does this mean for you and, and your implementations and what you've heard from others? Well, it's it's we really wanted to bring nine to the best we could before going to ten, because ten will have some breaking changes, and one of the major concerns was the dependency on Telerik, which is a I don't know twelve years old library yeah, I think yeah. we're using roughly, yeah. so it's pretty much outdated. There's some security concerns with it that we have been working around for many years. And our last big piece of work to get rid of that dependency was the file manager. So mm. there's been a lot of efforts um, building a new file manager. It's not perfect. We have plans to improve it, but it should bring feature parity, um, mostly for, for all features except some little UI things we plan on improving. Uh, but that that was the big chunk, and it's now resolved and if you want you can now remove Telerik. It's manual and optional so that you can upgrade to 9.8 without breaking everything um, and you can get ready for the NN10 by uh, testing these things out on uh, on production actually because you can really make sure that if it works on 9 and you migrate to 10 well it's not Telerik that's gonna bring your things it, it mm. would be something else a breaking change or something but you can rule that out and have a safe uh, nine uh, version. You know, I, th those are great points. I, I I can't help but to think back a little bit on the history of DNN and kind of leading up to this point. I mean, we've heard many times over the years, Telric is being removed. Telric is being removed, and there was there was truth to those statements. So it wasn't like they were lies or anything. It's just that it wasn't completely like complete right so that's that's why i kind of wanted to put this in the title to say yes this is finally the day that we can actually trust that statement that we can actually completely remove it and correct me if i'm wrong but i think this all kind of started back um with version 9 coming onto the scene and the introduction of the persona bar that was a given us the ability as a platform to remove all of those old web form modules that many of them had Telerik control dependencies in them and um, that, that was kind of the big first step right and then there were a few other little minor things here and there where little pieces were removed but I think the last piece and you mentioned it a few minutes ago was the the old asset manager uh, or the file manager as a lot of people uh, refer to it as that needed to go and it was a big undertaking i guess for the community to uh to be able to to contribute that i, I know you were involved heavily in that so thank you for your work on that you are welcome yeah so let's let's jump into it our our goal here is to really walk everyone through the steps and i purposely have not done this by myself yet <laughs> So I wanted to be the guinea pig, you know, so Daniel can sit here and slap my hand. Oh, no, you need to do that. No, you know, you need to do that. So I, we're going to make this raw and keep it real, you know, for you guys. And, you know, maybe break down a bit of fears that there might be in dealing with something this technical. It may be may feel a little bit scary to kind of go in and do some of these things. But it has been, you know, thoroughly tested through, you know, on how how this is done. And we're just going to kind of prove it here tonight. And let me be a, a guinea pig here. So I'm going to switch over here to um, a screen. And so if for those of you that do not know, 9.8.0 was leased. And you can come out to github.com uh, slash DNN software slash DNN.platform. And you can come to the releases area. 
and from there you'll be able to see the 9.8.0 release. Um, there's a lot of great things about it, but very first thing in the release notes, you'll see a section here uh, on the optional Telric removal. And I guess just to put a little bit of context into the optional piece of this is that this is a manual removal of it in 9.8.0. And you may be asking yourself, well, why didn't you just force the removal of it automatically so we don't have to take these manual steps? Well, it's a long story, but the short of it is that um, we weren't ready for a 10 release yet. And following semantic versioning rules, um, we could not do implement a you know a massive breaking change like this in a minor release. Um, so therefore, it was in you know done this way so that if people wanted to be able to remove it, which a lot of people would and should honestly uh, for security concerns and things like that if nothing else um, to be able to remove these um, so that's why it's secondary optional. to that secondary to that uh, dnn 10 will come with a different set of breaking changes also so we didn't want mm. to prevent people from removing the telerik dependency because of other breaking changes so we wanted to exactly. bring this into nine but it's optional and then it's going to be automated Fantastic. So we'll come back to this and this is the steps that we're going to go through. And I'll just go ahead and zoom in on this and pull it over here so that we can see that a little bit better once we get back to it. So in my next tab over here, I've already installed uh, DNN 9.8.0, a fresh install of it. And the only thing that I have done in addition to that fresh install um, is I added a page called feedback. And on that page, we installed, well, we installed the extension uh, of the feedback module. And we went to the, I'll just pull this up here. Um, the latest release is 6.7.0, but that has Telerik controls removed in it. And we're going to use this as a guinea pig kind of module here. Um, so we went to the previous version and then installed 6.6.3. And that version has Telerik controls in it just so that we can use that uh, to, to see it and so forth. The next thing that we're going to do, so yeah, it's a clean install of DNN with the exception of adding that, installing that extension and placing it on a new page called feedback. Um, the, the, the next thing that we should probably mention is that we're going to use a tool that if you guys caught the live stream with me and Mitchell Sellers a little while back, he was talking about a open source project that our computer gurus, his company, uh, and he released, um, it's called DNN Telric Identifier. And you can get this on GitHub, it's free, it's open source, you can download it and use it. The idea for this uh, module is to assist in this process of identifying any Telric dependencies that you may have in your DNN instance. Um, you can read up on the notes on this and so forth, and I won't go into too much of a deep dive here, but it does a really good job and for the most part will identify all your Telerik dependencies. It is not 100% foolproof on that. Um, so small disclaimer on that piece of it, but it does a really good job of identifying uh, the majority of your Telerik uh, kind of dependencies. So it's a really good sanity check tool to use. It's non-invasive. It's just exploratory to be able to identify information uh, uh, to you. So what we're gonna do is we're going to install this module. So we'll go to the version, latest release of it, which is 1.0.1 .1 at the time of this uh, recording. We're gonna download the install package here under the assets tab. So I will download that and put it into my downloads folder here. And I'm gonna go back over to the DNN instance and we are going to install this extension. Could have done this beforehand, but really just wanted you to see how simple it was to install this extension and to use it. So we'll do install extension. I'm gonna to browse to my downloads directory. And there is the install package that we downloaded from GitHub. So it is now uploaded and ready to install. So we'll go through the normal process here of next and release notes good and accept license oh man that checkbox hey, stayed move. there <laughs> i know <Yeah. laughs> it's so funny because I, that's I like... the second major highlight in 980 oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah but now people are complaining because they're like wait did something happen 
Oh, wait, because we're used to this little checkbox jumping over to here. It's been like that for years. Um, anyway, let's go. <laughs> we digress. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it installed uh, correctly. So we'll just go ahead and click done and wait for the site to cycle back. And while we're doing this, Daniel, walk through what the next step is going to be. We're going to we're going to actually use this tool. Is that correct to identify yes, the Telerik just... dependency? wanted to point out that you mentioned this is a new clean install and everything you can also upgrade to 980 oh, yeah, good point. there is no risk in upgrading because of telric that's why it's manual so this could be an upgraded site with 10 old modules and this is where this uh, identifier would come really handy in spotting those before doing our manual steps that's true so when you upgrade from whatever version you're on to 9.8.0 you are not destroying anything that's potentially using telework that's another reason it's manual uh, just like daniel just said and it's also another reason why we wanted to uh, really make a soft step uh, upgrade step available so that people that do have modules that use Telerik controls, um, that they wouldn't be impacted unless they wanted them to be impacted. So that way they could upgrade to DNA and get all the wonderful new features and performance and security things that are in there and work towards a um, removal of Telerik. You know, maybe they have custom modules that are using it or third party modules that are using it or whatever. So this identifier is really gonna kind of help you. So that way you can go ahead and upgrade, then install this, and we can pretend like this site was just upgraded, you know, and we, it'll be the same experience as what we're showing you here on a clean install. So now we have that in here. Um, and I guess, does it matter what play, page we put this on, uh, Daniel? Um, um, I would create a, it doesn't matter what page, it's going to work on any page. I would suggest to not put it in a public page, but there's still safeties in the module that it's not going to display details publicly. But yeah, if so you are on a live site or something, I would suggest making a Telerik page that's well, Telerik identifier page like this that's only visible by admins just yeah, for it, safety. Yeah, and let, let's show everybody a trick just in case you may not know this. Um, if you don't want it to show up in your page hierarchy and you want it to show up over here in the persona bar area, you can actually make the parent page of this the admin page. And that will go ahead and apply permissions that only administrators can, can see it and so forth. And it won't be in your site navigation and it will be over here in your uh, persona bar. So we'll just go ahead and add it there if that's all right with you. And if it's not too late and too bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so it is adding that, that now. I like to do that for things that are truly admin, you know, just like put them back there behind the scenes a bit. Okay, so the page is now, and you can see it's under admin here, but it also shows up right here. So that makes it nice and easy and hidden as well. So now we can put that module on the page and we can do a little search here. Tell, tell oops, tell Rick, there we are. We'll click that. And we'll try to grab it here before it floats away from us. And I'll go ahead and just delete this uh, this empty HTML module to get out of our way. All right, so it's already done its thing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we didn't have to tell it to do anything. Um, yeah. And, you know, your mileage may vary on this. Uh, you may see a long list of things here that have uh, Telerik dependencies in them. But it's already identified that the feedback DLL uh, for for the feedback module is indeed using Telerik, so that's so this good. does it with reflection using the DLLs, and it's going to give you the DLL name. So most of the time, it's easy to know which module. If you're not sure, then it's a bit more complex, and you know, fire up a message on uh, on GitHub discussions, or if you're on the Slack open help channel or something, a lot of people are going to know what matches what. But I'd say 99% of the time, the name is going to be here, and you're going to know what it is. Absolutely. Um, I was just interacting with some of our live viewers. Now we've got a few live viewers on, on here, so thanks for joining, everybody. Um, hopefully you find us really helpful. So I, that, this is pretty uneventful here, but <laughs> this is it. I mean, we know that, that we it. have an issue. 
So, you know, through the namespace here uh, of, the, of the DLL, uh, we can we can determine, okay, now that's probably the feedback module, you know, so you can l browse through this list and it should be pretty obvious, you know, what, what some of these are related to. And uh, you may find some obscure ones here or there, but uh, it should be pretty easy to, to determine. One thing that you may have is a warning, just because I've done it on different sites, a warning that it cannot identify this DLL due to it not having a manifest. This is not talking about the DNN manifest for those who do ah, DNN development. Point. It is due to the DLL not having a manifest for itself in, inside of it. And it doesn't declare its dependencies. That rarely happens with DNN modules, but if you have a DNN module that has a dependency on, let's say, Entity Framework or on Twilio or name it, sometimes those things were, were built with not with .NET in mind, they're multipurpose, and they don't declare their dependencies. So most of the time you can ignore those. Yeah, exactly. And I was looking to see if we had anything in here that actually had a manifest example in here, but we don't. But just so that everybody understands, you know, this bullet list that's going to show here, this is referring to a DLL. Well, that DLL is going to be living in your, whatever your root of your website is, the bin folder. And this is a special folder within ASP.NET, so you don't want to just go and delete this. That'll, that'll wreck your, your stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, that's literally the DLL that that's referring to, so it's literally the file name uh, of, that, of that DLL. So like Daniel was talking about with the manifest, some uh, DLLs will also have a, a secondary file that will end in, I think it's ends in dot manifest, doesn't it? Uh, the uh, uh, file name? There's will... different ways, but the, the most common way, it's built into the file. It's in the oh, built data into the inside file. of the file. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But That's I know good. there's XML files and this and that that can declare stuff, but a DLL built for .NET framework will have in the bytes a declaration of what it depends on and if it was not built for .NET or for some specific I don't know when that changed but basically that's optional declaring what you depend on is optional and if you depend on on libraries that are not DNN modules like I don't know Twilio like uh, uh, third-party libraries some of them might not declare that they have any dependencies and most of that time that means they mm. don't have any excellent Okay, well that, that helps clarify. So so next steps, Daniel, I mean, should we now look for a version of the feedback module that has removed Teller to, this to try is to what clean I this? And okay. Yeah, because when we start removing stuff, then you might break the feedback module. So I would go to each of the modules and find if there's an upgrade or a replacement or if it's even used. So in this it's case... Except for a cleanup if you don't yeah. use something. So in this case, we've made it easy for you, you know, but you, you know, you're obviously, if you have a longer list, you're going to have to do a bit of research and find out if there is a, um, a later version that has already taken care of telework removal. But in this case, we purposefully installed version 6.6.3 of the feedback module out on the DNN community org on GitHub, and it's called dnn.feedback. Um, whew, that was a mouthful. But we have purposely installed that one because it has a telework dependency in it. Well, it's been, thanks to the work of, I think, this was you, right, Daniel? I mean, you, yes, you up updated this one? Yeah, thank you. So this module has been updated to remove telework dependencies, and I think it was related to the CAPTCHA. Is that uh, correct? Correct. It was its okay. only dependency on Telerik. Okay, so let's go ahead and download this version of the module, and that way we'll be ready to upgrade it, and hopefully uh, we can come back to the Telerik identifier module and we'll see that we don't have anything in the list anymore. And so. just before you install it, I want to show something also. If you go to extensions, yeah, sure. mm -hmm. you can go to extensions, though. I'm going to go here and then go to extensions. That way we oh. won't be on that page. Uh, but yeah. Perfect. Okay. Extensions. So okay. if we scroll here to the feedback module, we're going to see the in use column as a little yes. Mm -hmm. If you see it's no, then maybe you don't have to upgrade that because it's not used anywhere. So on That's a great point. It, also remove the dependency. If you don't know where it's used, then you can click on this yes. Exactly. And it's going to so show you every place it's used if you have multiple sites or this or that. So you can take that opportunity to analyze, you know, do I even need this module? Or 
this is one of those hidden gems in DNA, and I've always loved this feature um, mm -hmm. because it, you, you know, it's a good idea, really, to come in here every once in a while and look for all the modules that have no <laughs> in them. Mm -hmm. And if you really don't need it, you know, you have to be careful with a few of them, like DDR menu and things like that, because yeah, it'll say no, but it's not because it's because it's not a module that gets placed on a page; it gets used by the theme. So you kind of have to know a little bit about what you're doing. But if it's a recognizable module that's like an on-page module, if you see no there, then you could probably safely delete it. Like. Hey, this is something built into the platform, but it's a good example. If you're never going to use the module creator module, well, you don't need it. You can just uninstall it. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, those it, that don't have a trash can, it's because they are system modules. So. Mm -hmm. And by clicking that page that showed up in the list, it'll open up a new page and actually bring us to the page on which the module is placed. Mm. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the later version to upgrade this module. So as you see, we're at 6.6.3 .6 version of this, and it's even showing that's for the later, later version of that. So we'll go ahead and click install, and I'll go and find the 6.7.0 install package for that that we just downloaded. Go upload, and we're good to go there and it does indicate 670 so we're looking good we'll go next and accept wait did anything happen yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there, there's well, little things like this that are a bit time consuming <laughs> and not a big bug so sometimes stuff like this stays for a while before someone picks up the issue exactly it's and like, that oh. one was you yeah, this is, every time I come to this and I click it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to fix that. Oh my gosh, I need to fix that. Oh my, you know, and you don't even think about it until you get back to here to do it, and you're not spending a ton of time in here. But it's like every time you have to deal with it, it's like, oh man. Okay, so we do have a bit of a problem on the upgrade here. Um, do you know of a reason why we might would have that uh, problem? Uh, website install time module feedback. Senior exception winter to extend the process cannot access the file because it is being used by another process. Hmm. Ah. Can you just simply retry it? Maybe there's yeah, a locked file we, somewhere. Yeah, and what we probably ought to do is um, probably ought to just recycle the app pool just uh, to maybe re release that or something. Oh, <laughs> I know what it is. I've got it highlighted over oh, here. Oh, you have it highlighted. This. Okay, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, note to self, so I'll just, I'll just get out of that folder there but the Windows Explorer kind of was using that file because we had it selected and it was showing information for it so they ah, so sorry for that but that's what was causing that issue that only happens in live streams <laughs> or doing demos right or presentations yes. and stuff like that okay and, and in this case this is really a safe upgrade anyway so there's no real concerns with that <laughs> um, I'm here so so we'll cross our fingers oh wait not double cross fingers because that cancels it out that, so I'll just leave one crossed <laughs> and okay we, 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 we look good this time so that's good so now now that we've done this we should theoretically be able to go to our Telric um, identifier page and module and it should not show that particular Telric dependency anymore so we'll go there Telric identifier, and of course I should have closed the persona bar when I did that because, mm. <laughs> and of course the site load's gonna be a little bit slow because we just upgraded the module that has a new DLL in it, so it's gonna cause that. Yay, success. Ba -da -bing, ba -da -boom. Wow, that was good. So you may be thinking, wow, is that all there is to it, to remove Telric? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's we're just talking about third-party modules and, and things like that at this point um, so this helps you clean and lets you know that you are ready to now follow the steps that are in the release notes uh, for the removal of Telerik yep all right so we ready to get into it sure all right so I've got the, I'm back over on the 9.8.0 release uh, on GitHub here. And there's a lot of words that we won't go through every single thing here, but let's start down on the, uh, we've kind of gone through the recommendation of using this module and cleaned up every module that's using it. So we're now ready 
to actually do this. So, you know, you don't, hopefully this is obvious, but I'll state it anyways, you know, you don't want to go through this list unless you know that you know you're okay breaking anything that was showing up in that list um, because it it, it will uh, <laughs> it will break it. So you want to make sure you you have a site that is able to be upgraded before you do that. Um, that means you want to strive to to do that as soon as possible because you do want to remove Telerik. Believe me, you do want to remove it. Okay, so take a full backup of the site in the database. Okay, that should be pretty easy. So. What I'll just do here is I'll copy all the files and folders in this. And let me just open up a new window and I'll just come up one level here and I'll create a backups folder. And we'll paste, uh, let's just call this one uh, pre until Rick removal and I'll paste those in there and while those are pasting I'll go ahead and go to SQL Server and we'll do a backup of this database now this is DNN 980 is the name of my database here so I'm in SQL Server Management Studio for those of you that don't know um, if you are on a a uh, shared hosting environment or something, you'll have equivalent tools in your control panel. Maybe it's Plesk or something like that. Um, you know, depending on your tool, if you're in Azure, it's going to be a different process, but I'm doing a true native kind of backup scenario here. So we'll just choose backup. Oops, I uh, clicked on that and the window went away. Okay, in this case, I'm okay just saving the backup database to the SQL Server folder structure. Um, in real life, I may would actually move that into a folder that I that I want to kind of keep track of my backups. And I'll go over to uh, right here and I'll do a verify backup when finished and perform a checksum before writing to media. Okay, that was real quick. Um, so that's done. <laughs> and our physical backup looks like it's done over here. I don't see any progress window still still running here. So we're good to go. We've done the first step. Now, second step here is an extension available extensions and modules. We'll need to install the new resource manager module. Now, this is the replacement uh, for the old file manager or digital asset manager, as you may refer to it uh, as. So we're going to install that so we can start using that instead of the old one. So let's go and do that. So we'll go here and we'll go to extensions. And when it's talking about modules, it means this drop down here. So we are showing uh, modules here, but we need to go to available extensions on this and modules. And you'll see that the new resource manager is already here. Um, it is distributed with the 9.8.0 release. So you don't have to download it and install it and that kind of thing, but you can just simply click install. So it's distributed, but not pre-installed. Exactly. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with this so far. It seems like I've gone through it before, yeah. but I haven't. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. So we now have that installed, and we'll let that uh, cycle the app pool there. While that's doing, I'm going to flip back over and look at the next step. Okay, so step three, navigate to site assets, remove the digital assets manager module from the page, and insert an instance of the resource manager. Okay, so we're not uninstalling it yet. We're really just going to remove it from one of the two pages that it exists on, right? Yes, and if I might interject, if you scroll down here to Digital Asset Manager, on the Yes for In Use, in a plain installation, it's going to be only used here. But that module can be used on pages to distribute files between a group, mm -hmm. a social group, or other stuff. So if you see more here, you might have more places to go replace it. Yeah, and this is a good point. I'm glad you brought this up because, like, it really is only on one page. Um, but you, the reason I mentioned two is because you may be going to site assets or global assets, and these are really going to the same page, but just different. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different info. Yeah. yeah. Different, different context. Same, uh, well, actually, they are two pages. It's just that one doesn't. One's show in the in host pages. menu and won't show in the list there. So yeah, the I guess it is technically two pages. Yeah, two instances of it. 
Okay, so we clicked on, just to show you, I clicked on site assets just in case I went too fast through that. And we'll wait for that page to load. All right, so here it is. This is the old file manager or digital assets management module. So we'll need to flip into edit mode and it wants us to remove this from this page, right? Exactly. Okay, so we'll just go to settings and delete. All right. Now, does it matter that it goes to the recycle bin, or is that uh, something we'll run into I in a little bit? I think it does not matter. Okay. And I think the instruction said to place the new resource manager module on here. Yep. Insert an instance of the resource manager. Okay. So we'll do that. Ooh, we get to see the new resource manager. Yay. Okay. So resource. There it is. And we will drop that right where the other one was. And voila, there it is. There's the shiny new object. Okay, so now what's next? We will go to step four. Repeat step three, but for global assets page. Ah, there we are. Yep. yep. So we'll go to manage global assets. All right, and we're going to rinse and repeat here, right? Exactly. All right, so we'll go here, delete. This feels good. Feeling good. Oh, yeah. Feeling so good. So good. All right, add module, resource, manager. And we'll put that on the page. Hey, what do you know? It worked there, too. Awesome. Ah, but it's different, right? Because we're at a host level, so we have more things in that exactly. directory structure. All right, so... And the model is going to display different thing depending on its context. So if you have it on a group page, it's going to be the group folder and so on and so forth. Ah, yep. Absolutely. Okay, so here, you know, and this is part of probably make a lot of people scared that are not used to doing this kind of thing. So, you know, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this SQL script here. It's just transacts SQL and it's going to do some things in the database uh, to make certain packages not system packages so that we could actually remove them. So I'm going to copy that. That comes back board. to what I was saying. The ones that are missing a trash can is because they are system packages. So now we're making them non-system packages. So we have the trash icon to actually yeah, delete them. Exactly. So just to bring that kind of full circle there to explain it again, you'll see that some of these like authentication, it does not have a delete well, icon here, right? Digital so that asset makes it... management is one. That's exactly. The one That's the remove. one we're doing. Yeah, good point. But we don't have the button. Exactly. We don't have a button. So these are what are called system modules. They're they're flagged in the system to not be able to be uninstalled. So we're just going to try to change that here. All right. So it mentioned going to the SQL console, uh, but there's not specific examples of how to get there or directions on how to get there. So just to show you, that'll be in settings and SQL console. All right, so we've got a new query, and oh, that's that's a shiny new editor. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll paste from what I put in the clipboard. Now, Daniel, I've got an important question here for you because I, I, I got a feeling a lot of people are going to wonder about this or be confused about it. Do I need to, in the context of SQL Console here, do I need to change database owner and object qualifier, or can I leave these brace kind of things in this context? Yes, it stays there. DNN okay. is aware to go replace that, but the actual database owner and SQL and um, object qualifier. So in this context, it stays. If for some reason you cannot do it in the DNN context and you have to do it through SQL Management Studio or your hosting control panel or some such, which I don't think there's any reason, but if there was, then you would have to replace those. So let's take just a quick side trip. And, you know, this is safe to do here, by the way. So you, you can feel free to do this here and you don't even have to deal with these other tools. But for those of you that are interested in this, it's it's probably good to know. I'm going to I'm going to copy that again. And we're going to flip over to SQL Server Management Studio. And I've got the database selected that I am wanting to run this in. I'm going to click a new query window and I'm going to paste this into here now if you have a new query window and you're wondering if you're actually 
connected, you know, or using the right database, you can always look right up here in this available database to make sure that it's the correct database that's selected because when you execute this, it's going to actually do it on that database. Now, if we were to run this right here right now, it would fail because of these, this, these braces uh, around the database owner and the object qualifier. Most of your instances will not have an object qualifier uh, to this. This is when you have a prefix on your, um, we, we don't have to go into a deep lesson here, but you would have to replace this. Um, so in this case, our database owner is the default DBO or DB owner. So we don't even have to have that here, but you can literally put DBO dot, oops, DBO dot, and it would actually work. Notice that I get IntelliSense there to, to show me the, the packages. So I can either do it without the DBO or that. If you're just doing a base install of DNN, it will not have an object qualifier in it unless you tell it to do so. Um, so I just thought I'd show I that to everybody. I not tell it to do so anymore. Oh, really? I thought you could but still do that. No, in we the, removed uh, that. With, oh, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> it, it is a very good thing because once you gets people have a lot it, of trouble. it's, yeah. So, the, so you can run this here and it'll be the same thing. But, you know, honestly, uh, in this case, I just run it through the SQL console, like it says. But some people are power users and I just wanted to kind of point that out there. Okay, so we have this ready to go. So we're ready to run the script. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, so we'll run the script. Okay, it did not return any results, but wait, did is that what I expected? Yes. Okay, good. So when you see this, don't freak out. It did it. This is actually an update statement, so it's doing an update, and there is nothing being selected to return. So this is the normal expected results from this. And if we were to go and look at these um, these packages in the database, we would see that now that column is set to zero, in fact, on those. And to kind of prove that, we can go to, ex well, no, yeah, well, no. yeah, we can go, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, I, started, I started to do that, uh, but that's that we're talking about packages now, so, all right, we got to come back. All right, so now we can go to servers and clear cache, right? Exactly. So, we'll so every time settings, you interact server. with SQL directly, DNN doesn't know that it changed. You're bypassing all the APIs. And DNN caches tables and rows from the database, so it still thinks nothing happened. So clear cache will force DNN to reread that table. So I'll go ahead and read the next one. Thanks for explaining that because that's the, it, that might confuse people. It's like, well, where's my trash can? I don't have my trash can now or my delete button. So the next step is that to clear cache, which I just did. And now we're going to go to extensions and we're going to literally try to uninstall uh, by clicking uh, uh, the trash can. And then there's a checkbox. You'll see it in just a minute. All right. And so, the order is important here because there's uh, dependencies is. between these four. So they have to be removed in that order, or it might refuse to remove, let's say, the uh, deprecated web control library because another thing relies on it. So it needs to be done in this order. Okay, thanks for pointing that out. Because, hey, you people that don't read instructions and just kind of <laughs> skip steps, don't do it because it'll get you in trouble in this case, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Slap the hand. Okay, ow, that hurt my wrist. Okay. Um, digital asset managers first then. All right, so digital asset management, and we're gonna click. Just make sure you see no. If you see yes, you still live mm -hmm. someplace where it's used, you know? Good point. Yeah, you know, I still have a question about the recycle bin, but I guess it doesn't matter because when we uninstall it here, it's going to also purge that, right? Yes. Okay, so that kind of calms my fears about that. So <laughs> there. And this parentheses over here that says tick delete files, what it's talking about is right here when we go to, we click the delete icon and come here, we want to tick this box, this checkbox for delete files. That way it'll literally delete those files. This is really important. Don't mm -hmm. skip that step. All right, delete. And we want to confirm. Man, so am I going to be able to like interact with my files and folders and upload stuff? Yes, you will be able to with the new resource manager. All right, so that step looks like it's done. It disappeared from my list, so that's yep. pretty cool. Man, I'm starting to feel cleaner already. <laughs> so we'll scroll down just a little bit. Well, we don't really need to scroll down, do we? Um, so we need to go to the next step. This is uninstalling .NET new Telric web components. 
Now, yeah. the note here is that this is a library. So the default selection when we go to extensions is going to be modules. So we'll have to switch it to libraries, right? All right, so we'll switch this over to libraries. Oops, and I scrolled right past it. There it is. Did because I? Because we've deleted oh, the DML. Okay. Oh, the site it's having to kind of reload. Yep. Yeah. I'm glad that little bar is up there because I'm I'm glad it's not telling me that my interconnect internet connection is uh, bad. <laughs> 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 like it used to say blame the user exactly okay now i chose libraries here but i don't see what it was talking about oh there it is like yep okay so is that literally right let's see yeah it is okay web components okay there it is so we can now delete this mm -hmm. and now daniel Yep, we need to take delete files. Oh. Okay, yep, just want to make sure. See how careful I'm being, people? This is mm. what you want to do. Even if you <laughs> think that you know what you're doing, yeah, read the instructions, make sure. All right, so we'll go here. I'll be here all night, by the way, uh, for your comic relief. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's done. Now, next step. All right, that's the one we were on. Now, I like to kind of highlight stuff as I'm going along, so I remember what I just did. All right, mm -hmm. so extensions libraries, same place, uninstall DNN deprecated web controls library. And we do need to tick that checkbox again. So, so for those who are a bit into development, these are basically the Telerik wrappers. So the deal that happened with Telerik was that you could use the Telerik, any DNN developer could use the Telerik controls as long as they went through the DNN wrappers. And this library are the wrappers. It's been marked as deprecated since 8.0.0, if my memory serves good. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. And I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, we, we covered this a bit when I was chatting chatting with um, Mitch Sellers about this, uh, the technology lead. And he was telling me, yeah, this is really the quandary that got us into this. I mean, well, this is really the thing that got us into the quandary is like, well, there needed to be this wrapper so that the licensing deal that DNN Corp made with Telric, you know, that allowed the use, but they had to have this wrapper around it to protect their licensing on it. And the idea, I mean, this is a great thing back in the day because, I mean, it gave developers and the DNN platform itself actually the ability to use all these wonderful controls. The problem is, was the wrapper and there was code around there and that, you know, long story short, I kind of got lost. So there is no way that we could actually fix all this or upgrade Telric underneath the thing. So that, you know, I mentioned this and Mitch mentioned this as well. This is not that Telric's bad. It's that our version, we're stuck on an old, old version. I mean, I can't remember how old it is, but it's pretty old and we can't do a thing about it. So this is why it has to go. It's yeah. got to go. It's got to get out of here. Got to go. And... Uh, it's been four years, so DNN 8 was released in 2016, January 2016. So it's going to be almost five years that every developer knows that this is deprecated because it's going to show in the source code you're using a deprecated thing. So it's not a surprise, and um, it's the time we are in now. Yeah, and I think Mitch said, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it was 2013 version of Delric that we're stuck on 2013, 2014, something I, like I, that? I don't want to, don't quote me, but I think it's 2012. It may have been, yeah. I know it was old. It's and old, I'll check people. while you continue. It gots to go. It's got to go. All right, here we go. Not to forget where we are. I'm going to go back and check. Okay, this is one that was highlighted. Okay, I'm doing DNN deprecated web controls library. Okay, DNN deprecated web controls library. I'm looking good. I'll click the delete. Be sure to tick the box. Delete. Daniel, in the unlikely event that someone forgets to check the delete files box. Well, the files won't get deleted. <laughs> so what I would say is reach out, uh, send an email to security at dnnsoftware.com and uh, the fine folks there will be glad to help you get through that in a more manual fashion. So 
um, there's a defined list of files that could be going manually deleted at that point. So you're not totally lost, but yeah. Send that to security at dnnsoftware.com because this is security stuff, okay? Also, right. since step one was taking a backup, you can always revert the backup and do it again. That's a good point. That's <laughs> an excellent point. So if you don't want to go through that channel, it's probably good practice to do it again because chances are you have more than one DNN site that you need to do this to. So you need practice. Go and do it again. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, and I'm you feeling were spot it. on 2013 for <laughs> All right, cool. Extensions, libraries, uninstall, .NET Nuke, deprecated website code behind files, and we need to check the tick box. Okay, here we go. DNN deprecated website code behind files. That looks right to me. We're going to delete. We're going to tick the check box because we don't want to have to go through that channel or redo everything again. Read the instructions, people. Follow them yep. one by one. And for okay. those curious about what this one is, uh, those was were, were pieces of code left in there to allow upgrades from pre-DNN uh, 9 into 9. Hmm. Uh, where the migration from the control bar to the persona bar um, needed those files. So huh. that's going to, that, it's still distributed, but as long as the NN is installed, it's no longer needed. So, so, so we're getting rid of these things because they used, they had some dependency on Telric. So anything that yep. just used it, whether we're really using it now or not, it gots to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't want those things on your server. All right, here we go. Next step. 11, open the web config file and search for Telerik. Delete any lines that reference it. Okay, this looks good, but it didn't tell me how to open the web config file or where the web config file is. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this, people. We could use DNN to do this, and I'm gonna come back to that and show it to you in just a minute. Um, but the file system where it is this is the root of my website, my local version of the website. There's the web config file. So you can just open this in, I like to use Visual, Visual Studio Code because uh, it's a nice editor and it's gonna give you nice XML formatting. So if we did that, it would open up and voila, there it is. So from here, you could, yep, there it goes. There's, oh, and it's got a new release. No, it's popping up. And it said to search for what? It said to search Telerik. for Telric. Okay. So we can do control F and we can type in Telric. This, All right. This looks like something I saw in DNN recently. I'm glad you brought that up, Daniel. So see how easy <laughs> that was to search and find that? Let's do it in DNN. Why don't we? All right. Let's go over to DNN and you can go to settings and config manager and this will give you direct access to the web config file now i will say be careful in here because when you're modifying web config you could just kill your website you may end up having to go to the web you know to the to the file system anyway it just yeah yeah just be careful when you're in here all right <clears throat> so web config we can select that and now we got wow this looks really similar this looks like vs code it does look like VS Code. Well, by golly, I think it is VS Code. I wonder if I can do Control F. Oh my gosh, there's the find dialog. There it is. Look at there. We've got three instances of it, and we can cycle right through them, and they're all together there. So, all right, I found them. Now what? So it we're kidding says... a little bit because we both worked on that part. Yeah, but <laughs> we are. The editor that is in VS Code is called Monaco, is now in the platform in multiple places where it's actually code that you're editing and it's awesome. You have the whole power of VS code minus the extensions, you know, uh, mm. in there, but you have all the, all the power of it. Okay. So delete any lines that reference to it. So you may be saying to yourself, delete lines. So Daniel, is this a line? Well, you see the 69 on the left. Yep, There's no other number until 70. So oh, these three things are one line. That's great. So the reason I bring it's that up right. is because this form factor, this constraining box here is forcing things to wrap here. So 
you know, if we were over in Visual Studio Code full bar, well, it is a line. But you'll see here that 69 does match there, so it's 70. So Daniel's tip is spot on. So what we want to do is we want to select and I, those. I, I think you could click on the number 69 to select the whole line. Hmm, that's a good point. I don't know if you can or not. Probably Let's 70 see. for fun. Yeah, yeah, it did work. So if you click on the line number, huh. it's going to select the whole line, so you're sure you're yeah. at the right place. Yeah. I, well, I learned something new. Okay. Man, VS Code is so powerful. So I click 69, and then I just hit delete, right, on my keyboard. Yep. Delete. Okay. Now that one is 69, so I need to select that. Delete. Now, select. And I'm double-checking that that little highlighted word, that I'm really doing that. So it's three lines. Now, your mileage may vary just a little bit on this, but for the most part, you're probably only going to have three lines here. All right. So we delete. Now what? I need to save changes, right? Yep. Okay. So, and this is where, like, if we didn't select exactly the right thing there and really was literal, like I wanted to be literal, and did lines, yeah, you would have been messed up. And uh, DNM wouldn't have even loaded because it would have been a mild formatted uh, web config file. So IIS would have said, uh, 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 you didn't say the magic word. Okay. I don't so understand what that. you mean. <laughs> So we're going to do this, right? Okay, save. And now let's reload. Let's just make sure that we're, okay, I'm going to actually close this out and I'm going to just try to visit the home page again. Are we having fun or what? Oh, yeah. This is going smoothly. I mean, we only had one hiccup and it was because of my little snafu of selecting the DLL in the uh, Windows Explorer. So if... We can do this like this. You can do it too, and you should do it. All right. Hey, DNN loaded. That's a good sign. All right. Let's go to the next step. It looks like we completed that one with satisfaction. All right. Number 12, verify in the bin folder. There are no DLLs. Daniel, got to, got to, got to work on your grammar here. Well, there I was are just about no one. DLLs. Okay. <laughs> well, you should have said DLL then. Okay. There okay. is no DLLs, including the word Telric. So what you're saying here is we need to go to the file system and in the root, go to bin folder. And we want to search this for the word Telric. Is that right? So could I just yes. use the search here? Absolutely. Okay. So I'll do a search. I found one. Aha. Should we delete that one? Well, <laughs> I haven't accounted for this one in the release notes. I did this on because that's our I, analyzer. I did this on purpose because I wanted to get you on that. <laughs> However, at the state we are now, you could uninstall this module. It served its purpose. That is true. That is true. So, yeah. it, you know, it's it. This is a sanity check just to make sure you don't have any DLLs in there that might just manually be you know uh, using Telric. Now, in this case, we know that this DLL, this matches Iowa Computer Gurus DNN Telric Identifier. That's the module we just installed to help us identify Telric stuff. Well, it bit us in the butt when we were looking for Telric. Ah, you guys, you guys, you guys. Okay. So that looks and good. It's, it's fun because the Telric Analyzer has Telric in it and the DNN things that have Telric and everything. So if you look at the source code of that module, there's a bunch of ifs to not show you stuff that it's normal at this stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, for you, uh, you know, people who are like manual, you know, taking a long time to do stuff, you could just go through this about five or six times and just make sure you don't see, you know, tell Rick anywhere in any of these names. Uh, that's another way to do it. But yeah, that's going to take too long. Use the search mm -hmm. feature. Yeah, just okay. don't search your backup folder. Make sure you're on the right one. Ah, that's true. That's true. Got to be in the bin <laughs> folder. All right, so yeah. now test your third-party modules to make sure they still work without Telric. Well, we had a module that you upgraded to not use Telric, so we really don't have anything to test here. I mean, we can make sure the feedback, feedback module yes. works, but, um, you know, it... You could go on the can... feedback module and enable CAPTCHA for everybody, and we should see a CAPTCHA. That's a good point. All right, so we'll go to feedback module. And... We'll wait for it to learn. And you want to configure this, right, to use CAPTCHA? Is that right? 
Yeah, it's in the model Still settings going. on the other one, on the gear and settings and... I'm not going to have a site key and a private key to use. Is that okay? No, because this model supports both the regular DNN built-in CAPTCHA, which is super basic, oh, or okay. you can configure it to use Google. So if you just enable CAPTCHA for everybody on the above where you are, for all oh, users, okay. this is going to be the basic DNN one. If you ah, tick use Google Which was CAPTCHA, a Telerik control, right? Which was a Telerik control. Ah, that was good broken point. because we had to shuffle things around and work around the Telerik vulnerabilities. Vulnerability. So it has been broken since 9.4, I think. And uh, now it's unbroken and it doesn't rely on Telerik. Awesome. So is that all I need to do then? Just enable it, it for all users? Okay, yeah. we'll update this. And drum roll, please. There it is. Super bada basic. Bada don't, boom. don't do that. It's there. <laughs> yeah. Get a Google API key. Hey, hey. if you think this is secure, yeah. it's not. It's not. It's not. Is it better than nothing? Nope. <laughs> maybe better than nothing. Okay, mm. that's maybe too far. I'm just pushing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these things got cracked along these butts. Just look right through that. It's like seeing through a glass window. It doesn't yeah. even exist. Okay. All right. So, I mean, we're done. We're Telric mm -hmm. fully free. We have no yep. Telric in our DNN. Holy That's it. crap. That is awesome. No, your mileage may vary. When you have that um, analyzer module, identifier, sorry, I keep giving it the wrong name. Uh, Tell if that identifier, list is yeah. uh, two mm -hmm. pages long, it might take you a bit more time. <laughs> this is true. We, we kind of set ourselves up for success here, and we wanted to keep this video you know, as, as short as possible here, yep. but also give you comfort on every single step that it takes to remove so, Telerik here. So yeah, there are some potential complex scenarios that you may run into uh, depending on what modules you have installed. Um, either custom or third party and yeah so but this gives you the basic steps to go through and you know if you need any help reach out to the community uh go yeah, on the forum the so. but at this point the identifier module has no more purpose so you could uninstall this if you want to clean up it's true i that, mean yeah. should i keep it around just in case i accidentally install something in the future that i just want to kind of you know check every once in a while to make sure i didn't it reintroduced I mean, Telerik or something? Yeah. Probably, but yeah. if the model Check. is written right, it should not even be able to install. Well, and that's that's <laughs> that's the point, I guess, is, uh, you know, if you do install a module that utilizes Telerik in a DNN Telerik way. Now, okay, so what we mean is it is leveraging the DNN wrappers that we spoke of earlier to use Telerik for free in the DNN context, those won't even work anymore because we just removed that all. So they'll have no way of actually working. That being said, now they could be using Telric, using a license, right, that they have and they're, and they're not using the wrappers for DNN. That's, that's okay. Uh, chances are they're on a late, you know, latest release of that, which is way more secure than what we had in the platform. So I and hope it, this brings me to think about something very important. So when you're shopping for a module or you're looking at open source modules and everything, they, they won't write in big letters if it uses Telerik or not. Mm. And they're going to advertise it's compatible with DNN 9. Now, just be careful. Maybe keep a test site around with the analyzer before putting this on a site where you already removed Telerik. Because the vendor would be right that it's DNN 9 compatible. You exactly. decided manually to remove Telerik. So just be careful on that little thing. And yeah, that's... Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure most of the, the, the major vendors in the ecosystem are going to be aware of this. And, and honestly, most of them are already Telerik free, so you're not going to have to worry about it. So, you know, it's usually some, you know... Um, one-off or something you know that's out there that's you know maybe they're not as big of a, a vendor you know in the space or whatever i for a plethora of reasons they may be uh, out there but you know even if you get in a situation where you install something that is 9.8.0 compatible 
and then you realize that it doesn't work, I mean, you can reach back out to the developer and it's actually a good thing because you reach back out to them and explain to them what's going on. If they didn't know that people could remove this, well, this is great incentive for them to update their modules to no longer use those uh, wrappers so that they can really be compatible moving forward because when it comes to DNN version 10, and Daniel, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's going to be a forced removal of Telerik at that point. It won't even be there. So there is no manual removal at that point. It'll be removed for you. So, you know, the path forward is to not be using these old Telerik uh, controls. Exactly. Anyways. And both on clean installs and upgrades. So when you upgrade to 10, that's going to get removed. And if you haven't tried or tested your stuff, it could break. Yeah. Well, also... Uh, the core modules, there's, um, I don't know, eight or nine of them that still have a little dependency on Telerik, and we are working on them just like the feedback module you saw here. So it's on our list, and we're going through those to bring you Telerik-free versions of those modules. Excellent. Great to point that out. Um, I guess I'll go back to the shot here. So there you have it, folks how to remove Telerik completely uh, from DNN 9.8.0. Daniel, thanks for joining. Yeah, I hope if you My guys um, enjoy this content, please hit the subscribe button below and hit the little notifications icon so that you'll get notified when future live streams come out. Of course, if you miss those live streams, you can always come to the channel and just see those uh, on a replay on demand basis. Um, thanks for joining us. I hope you have a great night. Take care.